Lovely people, welcome to 2019. Let us begin with performance. Oh, oh so it's 2019 and I'm kicking off this new year with a video series and I thought the video series we could do would be about performance. Now, if I've never spoken to you about performance, it is pretty much the thing that I've dealt with for the last bunch of years. Uh, it's really been my kind of go-to topic, so I'm very excited about sharing it once again. Um, and what I thought I'd do is just start off by saying, I don't think you should optimize everything. Ah, uh, 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 close. Yeah, I don't think you should optimize everything. I think you should optimize only the things that people are going to notice. So, what are they going to notice? Well, I think you can break down a web app in particular into four areas. Responses, which is basically acknowledging the user. Animations, which is things like scrolling or view transitions. Idling, which is where the user's kind of doing nothing. Maybe they're reading some content on screen or they're just not interacting. And then load which is what everybody thinks of when they think performance and is in fact the thing we're going to deal with last because in this video, we're gonna talk about responses. So as I said, you wanna optimize the things that people are going to notice. And responses are subject to something in the region of about 100 milliseconds. I say in the region of because it really depends on the person you're talking about. Some people, they are gonna feel some form of lag between clicking and seeing a response on screen around 50 milliseconds, other people are really not gonna notice much prior to 150. So it's gonna be like a Gaussian distribution, I reckon, um, somewhere, you know, centering around the 100 milliseconds. If you can do something inside of 100 milliseconds, you're all good. So this comes down to, if nobody's gonna see it, don't bother optimizing for it. That's my point. So for example, if you say, well, 100 milliseconds, um, I can get the work that I need to get done inside of that. Don't worry about it, you're all good. There's this panic sometimes that people are like, well, how do I get it done faster? You might not need to. So let's concentrate on that. What I've got on screen, I've got a little uh, example that I've uh, re reappropriated from uh, Ben Galbraith and uh, Dion Almeyer, who did this uh, similar kind of thing uh, at a Google I.O. many a moon ago, and I thought I'd recreate it for you here in some form. What I've got is I've got this box and I've got this drop down in the top left hand corner. And what this drop down does is it simulates a delay in response. So for example, when I click on this box, it goes that kind of pink color, it goes from blue to pink. So if I click in the background, it resets it. And the delay is one millisecond here, sure. Now I'm gonna feel any delay much more keenly than you are watching this. If you were to recreate something like this, you'd feel this for yourself. It's actually a really good exercise to do if you have the time. Okay, so one millisecond, you don't feel it. 100 milliseconds, you, you feel it a little bit. I mean, I'm feeling it a teeny tiny amount. And let's just try say 50 milliseconds. I mean, I, I, I kid you not, for me, that was felt no difference to one millisecond. So if the work that I had to do was somewhere around the 50 millisecond mark, I wouldn't bother optimizing this. I wouldn't panic about it. If it was in the, getting towards the 100, I might start thinking about it. If it starts to really climb, let's do 500 milliseconds here. So that's half a second. Ooh, yeah, I really felt that. You know, I, that was, a, that was, frankly, it was unpleasant. If that had been a button, I would be starting to be a bit unhappy. As a user, I'd just be sitting there going, hmm, 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 not nice. And of course, you could go to one second or even the mighty, 10 seconds. Ah, there it is. Done. Whew. That took a while. <laughs> Wondered if it was ever going to finish. Okay, two things. Firstly, one, how do you measure this? And then two, what do you do if you have a long response. Now I'm not going to get into the, the deep optimizations today. In fact, I'm not going to get to any optimizations because it really depends on your use case. Um, specifically, what you want to be thinking about though, is you want to be thinking about moving work away. So you at least appear async and you can continue interacting with the user. 
We'll talk about that more in a moment. Let's talk first of all about the measurement side of things. So what we'll do is we'll head over to the code and I've taken the liberty of marking the code up with performance.mark here, where you can start tracking. Can you see that there? Performance.mark. And then we put another mark at the end here. So in the middle, we've got some work, which is curiously named do some work with a duration. That duration is the is that timeout, that drop down. So I'm faking some work. Really, all it does is it a set timeout. And then when that timeout is finished, it fires and this uh, promise resolves. If this was something like uh, looking up data in IDB or pulling something from a URL, you know, you could imagine it being some some work that needed to happen here. So when the work is finished, uh, we do change the color of the box. Uh, and as I say, we do another mark. So there's a mark for the start. There's a mark for the end. And then what we do is we call this other API, which is called measure. We give it a name and then we can give it, I think you can possibly give it more than just these two, but I only need to give it a start and end and magically. I am going to go over here to the performance tab in DevTools and I'm going to just drop this back to say something like 500 milliseconds. I'm going to hit record, click, I'm going to stop recording and ooh, we have a row here in our output which is called user timing because technically that's what we've done. We've done some user timing, we've done some instrumentation to start marking out parts of our application where we want to uh, time it and take a look at the data in a little bit more detail. Now, as it happens, the main thread, which is where all your JavaScript and your styles and your layout and your paint and blah, 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 all that work is going on, um, because there's a set of timeout, it's basically empty. So I'm faking it. But you could imagine um, in your main thread, you might just see tons of work in here. You might see all sorts of bits and pieces going on, updating components, whatever, doing loads of fetching from IDB or whatever. See, the point here is what we want to do is we want to mark out our stuff in DevTools so that we can find the areas of interest more quickly. So we've got that here. Uh, user timing, boop, box. There you go. So as I say, it'll be empty in here. It wouldn't be empty if I was actually doing some work. You'd see um, entries in main there. I'm just going to hit escape just to drop down uh, that console because we don't need it right now. And you can also see, by the way, up here, and eventually it does go pink, boop, at the end of this block of work. Okay, that's the timing. So if, if you've never done performance.mark and performance.measure, you might want to start instrumenting your code just so you can start getting a bit of a handle on how your stuff is actually uh, working in terms of like which parts of the main thread are kind of active or what jobs are being done while you're doing your UI work. Now, here's the other thing that you can do. Let's imagine now that we know that uh, doing some work as we have here, um, it's going to potentially take a while. What we can do is we can be a little bit more uh, tactical about our UI in the interim. So what I've got here is I've got a little bit of extra code, which I'm just going to bring up. I've, I wrote this earlier because I just thought I won't waste your time um, watching me type this up today. Don't want to do that. What we do is we start by being pessimistic. So as soon as we start marking our performance at the start, we also set a timeout. And the timeout says, after 100 milliseconds, show a spinner. Okay, that's what I want you to do. I want you to show a spinner. Then we start the work. So basically the, the clock is running. Can we get the work done of do some work? Can we get that done inside of 100 milliseconds? If we don't, we'll show a spinner. And the show a spinner is just going to put in this case, it's going to change our block from blue to purple and it puts a little kind of icon in the middle just so we can see it. Then the next thing we do is let me just bring this up here and then I can talk you through what's actually going on. Right. Uh, da, da, da. Here we are. We'll pop that after the do some work. So these changes to our code are going to make actually quite a lot of difference. So if you remember, we started the clock running. and we've, we've assigned the timeout to this ID here and we start doing some work. If do some work finishes first, we're going to clear the timeout, which basically means, OK, we're not going to show the spinner. We're just going to carry on working. If do some work finishes second, so i.e. the spinner has shown, we now need to hide it. So these two are essentially um, whatever happens, you want to do these two things. You definitely want to clear the timeout so that you know if it's already fired, well, that'll do nothing. If it hasn't fired, it'll clear it. 
and then uh, we want to hide the spinner. Now, if the spinner hasn't been shown, then we can hide something that hasn't been shown and no, do nothing. And then we finish the work as we did before. Well, what does this do to our output? Well, over here, let's refresh here. At one millisecond, makes no difference. Even at, say, 100 milliseconds, no difference because it's the work is finishing just as that timeout will be firing. However, if we go to say one second, oof, yep, and you see, let's watch that again. We click, and after 100 milliseconds, basically what we're saying is, no matter what happens, after 100 milliseconds, I will acknowledge the user. I will show some spinner. I will show something that acknowledges. I know you've clicked. You don't need to click again. We're all good. I've heard you. It's just taking a little bit longer. If the work completes quickly enough, we don't bother showing it. But because that 100 milliseconds is right on the point of where somebody's going to notice, you're all good. So that's responses. Really, I'm not going to get into the, the deep dive on, ah, this is how you can optimize responses. We can get to that later if you're interested. For now, I just wanted to point at, first of all, the fact that you can measure this in DevTools with performance.mark and performance.measure. And secondly, that you can do some UX work to basically acknowledge your user no matter what work you actually have to do in your responses. You can tell the user, I hear you, I've not forgotten about you, um, I'm not going to lock up the main thread, I'm just doing something else. And when I get that work done, I'll hide the spinner and then we'll carry on as, as we were. Obviously, you do want to bring that work down. If you can get it down under 100 milliseconds, great, good for you. If you can't, at least you've got a pattern you can use. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you have. That's always a wonderful thing to do. Subscribe if you haven't already. Also another wonderful thing to do. Click the notification bell if you want to know when I put one of these out. As I say, it's a mini series. So there's going to be more of these. Again, a good thing to do. And I will see you lovely people on the next video.